Let's talk about when one would use iterators. Code that processes an iterator via next or an iterable, usually via a for statement or occasionally with iter, makes very few assumptions about the data representation, which means that changing the data representation from a list to something else, a tuple or a map object or a dict keys object or something like that, doesn't require rewriting any code. So this is really a data abstraction idea. If you just treat something as iterable or an iterator without worrying about exactly what it is, then your code will work even when the way in which the data is represented has changed. That means other people are more likely to be able to use your code on their data if they have some strange format. An iterator also bundles together a sequence and a position within that sequence as one object, which can be quite convenient when passing that object around to other functions because you'll always retain the position. This is useful for ensuring, for example, that each element of a sequence is processed only once because even if you're passing that sequence around, if it's an iterator, whoever calls next on it is advancing the iterator for any other function that calls next again. So a particular value will only be returned by next once. Finally, passing around an iterator limits the operations that can be performed on a sequence to only requesting the next value which I imagine could be convenient because then you don't have to worry about some function changing the sequence aside from just advancing the iterator. Let's work through an example. The game here is Casino Blackjack. The way that works is that you try to get close to 21 without going over by drawing cards one at a time where the numbered cards are worth their face value, face cards are worth 10, and aces are worth either 1 or 11 depending on your preference. The way Casino Blackjack is dealt is to give one card to each player, then one card to the dealer, which is shown face up. Then each player gets a second card, and the dealer gets a second card, but this one is face down, called the whole card. Then the player has to decide whether to get more cards or not before the dealer does. The player can choose when to ask for more cards and when to stop called holding, the dealer follows a set formula, which sometimes varies a little bit depending on the casino, but always the details are announced, so the dealer's not really making decisions, they just have some fixed policy. So the player goes first, sees that they have 16, wants more points than 16, because it might be that the dealer has 20, so asks for another card and now has 21, which is good, because it's not over 21, and it's the highest score you can get. Once the player decides they have enough cards, they say, I hold. Now the dealer flips over their whole card, sees they have 13, and dealers have to hit as long as they have less than 17. They get an ace, so now they either have 24 or 14. 24 would be bad, because that's over 21. So we'll count this as a one. 14 is still not up to 17, so we take one more card, hit 24, that's over 21, so the dealer loses, and the player would win a dollar. I'm not going to type all of this out because it's kind of long, but here's the part about jacks, queens, and kings being worth 10, aces are 1 or 11, and the way that's handled in this program is by taking in a handful of cards, summing up the points for each card, where if the card isn't in the dictionary, like the number of seven, then we just use that card itself as the number. And if it turns out the total is less than or equal to 11, then you want your ace to be worth 11 instead of one, so that you can, for example, go from 11 to 21. Okay, how do you play blackjack? Well, you shuffle the cards, now you have a deck of cards, you deal, as I said, the first two cards for the player and the dealer. Then the player gets a turn. They might go over 21. Then they lose a dollar. Then the dealer gets a turn. They might go over 21. Then the player gains a dollar. And if nobody goes over 21, then you compare their scores. And here's some tricky logic to say that if you tie, you get zero. If you have fewer than the dealer, then you get negative one. And if you have more than the dealer, then you get one. Okay, but what is the deck and how do we deal cards? 
Well, we shuffle the cards by putting together a list with all 52 cards, calling the built-in random.shuffle, and then returning an iterator over that deck. Which means that people can call next on the deck of cards and get the next card, but there won't be any repeated cards in there. Instead, you keep drawing from the top until you run out. In a game of blackjack, you never run out of cards, so we'll just deal off the top few. The player cards is a list that starts with whatever is next in the deck. Then comes the up card, which is whatever is next in the deck after that. Then the player gets another card. And finally, the dealer gets another card, but we're not going to let the player look at this one. When it's the player's turn, they only get to see the dealer's up card, not their whole card. And these are just like conventional terms for the cards. This is the one that's showing and this is the one that's hidden uh, among the dealer's cards. Player gets to look at their own cards and then they're going to go execute their strategy, which might involve getting more cards from the deck. While they haven't gone bust and they want another card, we append the next card from the deck. And their strategy has to be a function that returns true for wanting another card or false for being ready to stop based on the dealer's up card and the cards they have in their hand. Okay, then it's the dealer's turn, and the dealer follows an algorithm. They don't get to decide based on a strategy. It's just that when they haven't scored 17 yet, then they have to get another card. Actual casinos have slightly more complicated rules around this, but I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so what's a good strategy? Well, one strategy is, if you don't have 11 points yet, you might as well get another card. If the dealer is showing something small, then oftentimes you'll just wait and see what they get. If they're showing something large, like a 7, 8, 9, or 10, then check and see if you're at 17 yet. If you're still at 15, get another card. Okay, so let's play some blackjack and see what happens using my basic strategy. I grabbed 15, the dealer had 17, and so I lost a dollar. I had 18, they had 21, oh, I lost a dollar again, but this time I didn't hit because they had a three showing and they ended up going over 21. So I got a dollar. This time I lost, that time I won. I'm feeling pretty good. What happens if I keep going for a while? Play a thousand hands. Well, I wrote a function to do that, so I didn't have to show you what happens. The only thing here is that I'm replacing the print function with something that doesn't print so that I don't have to see the outcome of each individual game. I just sum up the negative ones and the ones and the zeros for a thousand hands. And I'm sure that when I gamble a thousand times, I will make piles of money. Oh, well, in fact, I lost 67 more times than I won or 75 or nine or 10. Oh, this time I won more than I lost. So it is possible every once in a while to win more than you lose in a game of blackjack casino rules, but it doesn't happen very often. And that's how casinos make money, even though you feel like you might be winning.